Hello and welcome. I'm Suzanne Deason. For your convenience, at the end of this video, I've provided you with information that will assist you in understanding the foundations and principles of yoga. Before we begin, I'd like to introduce Stephanie Herman and Gerald Herndon. Stephanie and Gerald will be assisting me in demonstrating the poses and the variations. To assist you with your practice, you'll need an empty stomach, bare feet, a strap or a tie, a blanket or two, a chair, some wall space, a non-skid mat, preferably placed on a non-carpeted surface. Enjoy your practice. Namaste. Let's begin with the pose created by my favorite animal friend, the cat. This pose helps to lengthen the spine and open the hips. It also teaches you to synchronize movement with your breathing. Watch the movement, then continue to listen and join us. Let's begin on the hands and knees. Hands should be far enough in front of the shoulders so that the spine feels long. The knees under the hips. The movement begins in the pelvis. The sitting bones, the two bones on either side of your tailbone, release downward toward the floor. The lower back rounds. The abdomen lifts up as the movement rolls through the spine. The head releases away from the shoulders. Now reverse the movement. Again the movement begins in the pelvis. The sitting bones lift upward toward the ceiling. The spine gently releases downward. The arms are straight as the head lifts. Now with the breath, exhale, round the back. Roll through the length of the spine. Inhale, lift the sitting bones. Roll through the spine. Keep the arms straight. The head lifts. Exhale, synchronize the movement to the breath. Round the back, release the head and pause with the breath. Inhale, lift the sitting bones. Feel the chest open as you invite the breath into the lungs. Lift the head. Exhale, round the back. Abdomen lifts up to meet the back body as the breath releases and the head hangs away from the shoulders. Inhale, lift the head. With your exhalation, bring your spine back to neutral. This is a resting pose called child's pose. If at any time during the rest of the series you feel the need to take a rest, use this pose or the variation. Separate your knees a wide distance. Bring your toes together with the top of the foot against the floor. Sit back on your heels and let your spine rest between your thighs. Stretch your arms in front of you. If this position bothers your knees, roll up a blanket and place it behind your knees. The abdomen is soft and the breath is easy. This is a resting pose, so you should feel comfortable. From child's pose, come to your hands and knees. Bring your shoulders over your wrists and your hips over your knees. This pose, the windmill, will help you to open tight shoulders and lengthen the muscles of the side body and chest. Keep your arms straight as you inhale and lift the arm. Exhale as you release. Inhale, straighten the arm and reach through the fingers. Exhale and release. Left side. Inhale and lift. Exhale and release. Inhale slowly and move with your own rhythm. 
Keep the arms completely straight as you reach from index finger to index finger. Do each side three or four times. As you're feeling now, using the arms with the breath really helps open the chest and gets the breath moving. Finish up the last side. Exhale and release. Now let's move on to the larger muscles of the body, the legs and the buttocks. These muscles are strong and sometimes restrictive. Watch for variations and work at your own pace. From your hands and knees, bring your right foot forward between your hands. Bring your fingers in line with your toes. Your shin should be vertical. Long, deep exhalation, followed by a slow inhalation. Any discomfort in your back knee should be avoided. Relax your back foot by turning the top of the foot toward the floor. If this is enough for now, stay in this pose and breathe. For a more difficult variation, turn the toes under and straighten your back leg. Check your front shin, it should still be vertical. Straighten the back leg and extend through the heel. Soften the abdomen and breathe. Exhale and release. Change legs. Bring your left foot forward. Line up the fingers and the toes. Make sure your front shin is vertical. This will protect your vulnerable knee joint. Release your knee to the floor. Relax your back foot. Now slide your right knee away from you. Feel the inner thighs moving apart. Feel the spine lengthening. Keep the breath smooth and even. Think of opening into the stretch. Now turn your toes under and straighten your back leg. Straighten it completely. Extend through the inner legs into the inner heels. Continue to breathe evenly. We'll continue to lengthen the muscles of the legs. To prepare the calves for the next pose, downward facing dog pose, come into a squat position. Feet should be a comfortable distance apart. Draw the inner and outer heels toward the floor equally. Keep the weight balanced over the center of the foot. Lengthen the spine. You can use your fingertips on the floor or your hands on the chair for balance. Stay in this pose while I demonstrate downward facing dog pose. The hands are placed shoulders width. The index fingers point straight forward. The palms are wide on the mat with the fingers spread apart. The toes turn under and lift the sitting bones upward. Press the floor away from you with straight arms and release your head and neck. The spine lengthens. To stretch the legs, draw the heels equally toward the floor. To come out of your squat, come forward onto your hands and knees. Now separate your hands shoulders width. Place your palms on the mat and widen your fingers. The spine is extended and the knees are under the hips. Turn the toes under. Lift the sitting bones upward. Press the floor away from you and release your head and neck. Lift your sitting bones upward and draw both the inner and outer heels to the floor equally. Breathe. 
Continue to use the strength of your arms to press the weight of your body back into your feet. Exhale and come down. Rest in child's pose. As you progress with this series, you'll want to increase the length of time you hold each pose. Downward facing dog pose is an excellent pose to use as a time out to release tension and quiet the mind, or if you really want to stretch and only have time for one pose. Let's do it again. Stretch your arms in front of you and bring your shoulders over your wrists. Turn your toes under and lift the sitting bones upward. Press the floor away and lengthen the spine. Release the head and neck. Now take a moment to look back at your feet. Separate them hips width. With an exhalation, draw the inner and outer heels to the floor equally. Keep the breath smooth and even. As you can feel, this pose works the entire body. When the breath becomes rough, it's time to come down. From child's pose, turn onto your back. Bend your knees and place your feet on the floor. Now bring your right leg up and put your right ankle on top of your left thigh. This pose is for the hips and thighs. Any pain in the knee should be avoided. If the hips are very tight, this may be enough. Otherwise, for a deeper opening, bring the left thigh toward you and reach through the hole, pulling it in close. Extend through the right heel. Garrel is showing a supported variation of this position. Notice that there's a blanket neatly folded under his head and neck. If you find in any of these positions on your back that your chin is lifted toward the ceiling, place a blanket under your head and neck to avoid neck strain. Exhale and change sides. Start with your feet on the floor. Bend your left knee and place your left ankle on top of your right knee. Extend through your left heel. Draw the right thigh in close. Soften the abdomen and the forehead. The breath is even. Relax the shoulders and neck. It's very common for the two sides to be different. Yoga moves the body towards symmetry. Exhale and release. The boat pose, as with all yoga poses, use all the muscles of the body. You'll really feel the back muscles and the abdomen and the legs. Sit on your sitting bones and bring your feet in close. Lift and elongate your spine. Keeping the spine lifted, wrap your arms under your knees. Lift your feet and balance on your sitting bones. Firm your abdominal muscles in toward the spine. Use your back muscles to lift the spine. Bring your hands to the outer knees. Hold on, widen your V, extend your legs, and balance. If this is easy, keep the lift in your chest and legs, and let go with the hands. Balance on your sitting bones. Let the breath flow. Exhale and come down. Sit with your feet in close to your sitting bones and breathe into your back. As you progress, hold the pose for longer, increasing the number of breaths. If that variation is hard on your back, try this one to build strength. On your elbows, feet on the floor, knees bent. Firm the abdominal muscles in toward the spine. Lengthen the spine. Exhale and straighten the legs. Hold for a complete breath. Exhale and release. Let's do boat pose again. Come to your sitting bones. Lift your spine and wrap your arms under your knees or do the variation that Stephanie is showing. Lean back and balance. Hold on to the knees. Exhale and widen the V as you extend the legs. Extend through the heels as you lift the chest with the support of the back. Firm the abdominal muscles in and up. 
exhale and release. Rest with your arms hugging your knees and breathe into your back. Standing in balance is what creates good posture. This is mountain pose. Come to your feet now. Stand with your feet hips distance and parallel. Check to see that the outer edges of your feet are parallel. Feel the weight of the body in the heels of the feet and widen the toes to create balance. Inner and outer heels, balls of the first toes and the little toes should be in contact with the floor. Now lengthen the legs. Lengthen the legs by standing on the feet and lifting upward through the inner legs. Now lift the spine. Make this an internal movement as though lifting the inside of the body as the outside follows along. Keep the front, the back, and the sides of the body equally open as you lengthen the spine and release the shoulders. Now balance the head on top of the spine. Let go of the arms and the shoulders and breathe. This pose is the first of the standing poses and teaches you awareness of the feet, the legs, and the spine. With awareness of the feet, the legs, and the spine, we'll add balance. This is tree pose. You may want to have a chair or a wall so that the fingers can lightly touch. Remember that a tree grows in many directions. The roots move down as the branches reach up and out. Grow the pose from the foot upwards. Allow the breath to flow. From mountain pose, shift your weight to your right foot. Place the left foot at the ankle, the knee, or the inner thigh of the right leg. Gently press the foot to the leg and the leg to the foot equally. Reach the spine. When you have your balance, raise your arms over your head or place the fingers on a wall or a chair. Keep the front and the back body open as you lift the spine from the inside. Breathe evenly. Exhale and release. Shift the weight to the left foot and bring the right leg into the appropriate spot for you. The bent knee should move away from the center of your body and the hip bones should be level. Stand firmly on your left foot and widen your toes for balance. Gentle pressure of the foot to the leg and the leg to the foot will encourage the spine to lengthen. Keep the shoulders and the neck relaxed. Soften the eyes upon an object at eye level. Exhale and release. Return to mountain pose. As you continue to practice, you'll notice the soothing effects of these poses upon the body and the mind. The next two standing poses use the same foot placement. This is foundation information, so please watch and listen carefully. The feet are separated a wide distance, three to four feet, depending on your height and flexibility. The right foot turns out, the left foot turns in. I'm using the front edge of my mat to show the front heel is in line with the center arch of my back foot. Now notice the position of my front knee. It's turned upward to face the ceiling. As I bend my front knee, I track my knee over the middle toe. See how the knee is torqued in the incorrect position. As you bring your knee forward, also see that the shin stays vertical as in the previous lunge position. This is a fiery pose. You'll feel the heat rise from your belly. It builds strength in the legs and flexibility in the hips. If this pose is difficult, Stephanie is showing a variation to help lengthen the inner legs. Step your feet a wide distance. 
Turn your right foot out. Turn your left foot in. Line up your feet. Heel of the right foot in line with the arch of the left. Raise your arms. Extend your spine. Extend through the left leg as you bend the right knee. Keep your spine extended. The breath is even and deep. Think of the rays of the sun extending away from its center and extend all the limbs. Inhale and come up. Release the arms. Turn your feet forward. Have your feet in contact with the floor and extend the legs and arms. Turn to the second side. Left foot out, right foot in. Raise the arms, shoulders height, and extend through the fingers. Exhale and bend the left knee and center it over the heel. Extend through the back leg. Balance the head over the extended spine. Soften the abdomen and the forehead. Breathe. Inhale and come up. Turn the feet forward and release the arms. Walk the feet together and stand in mountain pose. Before we do the pose again, notice my stance. It's common for beginners to make their stance too narrow. Look how my body weight collapses onto my knee, throwing my pose off center. When my feet are separated the correct distance, my body weight is decentered between the thighs and the pose looks and feels more centered. This position also protects my knee. Turn your right foot out, your left foot in. Inhale, lift the arms and extend the spine. Exhale and bend your front knee. Reach through the back leg all the way into the heel. Press the front heel into the floor and move the heels away from each other. Support the arms from the side body, keeping the shoulders and neck soft. Inhale and come up. Walk the feet back together and stand in mountain pose. Turn your left foot out and your right foot in. Extend the spine and the arms. Exhale and bend the front knee. Keep the spine vertical. The body weight should be balanced between the two legs. Breathe deeply into the abdomen. Feel the warmth radiate from the inside out. Inhale and come up. Come back to mountain pose. Stand on your feet. Soften and extend. Side angle pose is similar to warrior two, but it requires more work from the hips and legs. Use the chair for this pose if you need to. The feet are separated a wide distance. The right foot turns out, the left foot turns in. Raise the arms and bend the front knee. Strongly extend through the back leg. Reach the ribs over the thigh. Elbow on the knee. Remember the alignment of the ankle, the knee, and the hip. Use the elbow to help keep the knee in place. Turn your right foot out, your left foot in. Heel in line with the center arch of the back foot. Raise the arms. Extend through the back leg and bend the front knee. Lengthen the spine. Exhale, extend through the back leg and reach the spine out over the front thigh. Place the elbow on the knee. Now extend the left arm beyond your head. Turn the palm down. Again, the breath is deep into the abdomen. Inhale, press the back heel, lift the top arm, and come up. Turn the left foot out, the right foot in. Raise the arms and extend through the back leg. Bend the front knee. Lengthen the spine. 
Exhale and reach through the back leg as you lengthen the spine over the front leg. Remember the alignment of your front knee as you place your elbow on your thigh. The breath is smooth and even. Stretch your right arm over your head with the palm down. Lengthen the legs away from each other. Inhale, extend through the back leg, lift the top arm and come up. Walk your feet together and stand in mountain pose. Relax the shoulders and the arms. Right angle pose at the wall will stretch the legs, the arms and the spine evenly. You can use a wall or the back of a chair. Place your hands approximately hip height on a wall or the back of a chair. Step your feet back and bring your spine parallel to the floor. The heels should be under the sitting bones. Have your feet separated hips distance. If you find that your back is rounded, walk your hands up the wall to shoulder height and stretch back at the hips. Straighten the arms and lengthen the spine. Feel the strength in the legs. If your spine is flexible, rather than dropping it downward, move straight back from the wall, feeling the weight move into the feet. Imagine that there's a strap at the top of the thighs pulling you back. Lengthen from deep in the abdomen. Breathe softly and deeply. Inhale and come up. Come back to your mat and place a blanket over it for comfort. Simple back bends strengthen the spinal muscles and help create flexibility for good posture and grace. They also create space in your chest so that you can breathe more easily. Lie on your stomach and place your palms on the floor with the thumbs in line with the armpits. Separate your feet hips width and extend through the legs. Firm your buttocks. Keep your feet on the floor as you lift the upper body using the back and abdominal muscles. Lift from the body, not from the head and neck. Breathe easily. Exhale and come down. Relax your body against the floor. Once again, inhale and come up. Remember to breathe. Exhale slowly and evenly. Keep the feet on the floor and the buttocks firm. Exhale and come down. Rest. Stretch your arms along your body. With your arms on the floor beside you, turn your palms up. This time as you lift, the palms press upwards and the fingers reach back towards the toes. Keep your breath smooth and even. Try not to bob up and down. Lift up and breathe evenly. Exhale and come down. Rest your body and breathe. With your exhalation, extend your legs. Firm your buttocks. Lift the palms up and reach the fingers toward the toes. Lift the body. Soften the eyes and the face. Soften the shoulders and neck. Exhale and come down. Release to the floor and rest. Let's do the pose once more. This time, take your hands behind your back and face your palms. Interlock the fingers and stretch your hands back toward your heels. Lift up and feel the front of the shoulders open. Stretch the hands back toward the heels and lift the body. Continue to extend the legs. Keep the neck long and extended. The front, the back, and the sides of the neck should feel long. Exhale and come down. Legs and arms release to the floor. 
Stretch your arms in front of you and separate them shoulders width. This is a diagonal back bend from the right arm to the left leg and from the left arm to the right leg. First the right arm and the left leg. Inhale and with an exhalation lift and reach the right arm in front of you and the left leg behind you. Press down with the opposite arm and leg to stabilize and balance. Exhale and come down. Second side. Inhale and lift the left arm and the right leg. Keep your breath even, your eyes soft. Exhale and come down. Bring your hands in line with your shoulders and press yourself into child's pose. Turn the top of the foot against the floor and stretch your arms in front of you. Breathe into your back. Feel the breath move into the back. Now walk yourself to the right and stretch your left hand across your body. Feel the left side body open. Breathe into that opening. Now to the left. Stretch your right arm across your body. Feel the right side body open. Breathe into the lower back. Now come back to center. Roll over onto your back and bring your knees up to your chest. Soften the forehead and the abdomen. If your chin is lifted upward, remember to put a folded blanket under your head. Let the back release. Have your strap or tie near you. From a soft abdomen, extend the left leg to the floor. Take your strap and put it around your right heel. Hold the strap close to the foot and extend the heel to the ceiling, allowing the strap to slide through your hands. The shoulders should be relaxed on the floor and the arms straight. Close your eyes and breathe deeply into the softness of the abdomen. Keep the legs completely straight. Soften your jaw. Breathe into your belly. Exhale and release the leg. Put the right leg on the floor and extend it completely. Draw the left knee towards you. Hug it. Soften the abdomen. Place the strap over the heel and hold on to the strap close to the foot. Exhale and extend the heel toward the ceiling. All the limbs are straight. The belly is soft. The forehead and the throat are soft. Open the throat as you breathe. Feel the back move against the floor as you breathe. Exhale now and bend your left knee to your chest. Keep your right leg straight and roll onto your right side. Stretch back through your left arm. Use your breath. Breathe into your back waist. Turn onto your back. Bring your right leg up and extend through your left. Roll onto your left side and stretch back through your right arm. Move your bent knee a bit closer or farther away from you. Find the right position to relieve your back of any tension. From this position, turn on to your knees and sit back on your heels. The last pose, deep relaxation pose, is generally the favorite. It gives us the opportunity to experience the effects or the echo of our yoga practice. To allow your body to relax, you'll need to support it. Common areas of discomfort in this pose are the neck, the lower back, and the knees. I'll show you a couple of simple things to make your relaxation more delicious. Have a blanket or a non-skid mat under you if the floor is cold. To ease the lower back, place your lower legs on the seat of a chair. Support all the way to the back of the knees. 
Have a blanket with a small roll in it to support the head and neck. Turn your palms upward. You can also support the back of the knees with the blanket roll. This relieves stress on the knees and softens the lower back. If your chin is lifted upward, bring a neatly folded blanket under your head. The height of the blanket varies. If your neck is in a good position, it should feel soft to the touch with no strain. The arms are to the sides with the palms up. Classic relaxation pose is on the back, arms at the side, palms up. The legs are separated a comfortable distance and the feet are relaxed and turning outward. Try all three positions to find your favorite. Cover up if you're cold. Take a deep breath. Exhale completely. Slowly inhale your next breath. Exhale and pause. Just for a moment, Notice how your body feels. Notice the rhythm of your breath and your quiet mind. Keep your breath, your mind, and your body relaxed. Living in a body that moves and breathes with ease is more comfortable than when muscles are tight with tension and fatigue. Using ancient poses, or the Sanskrit word, asanas, the body releases tension in muscles and joints. Tension in the mind, or stress, can cause a variety of physiological effects. Headache, stiff neck and shoulders, and shallow breathing are common effects of stress. As tension is released through the asana, the breath begins to flow more easily. The body and mind feel more open and spacious. By bringing focus or awareness to our breath, we give the mind something to do. We tell it, shh, watch the breath. Awareness of the breath quiets the mind and invites it inward. Through the asana and the breath, we begin to sense the purpose of yoga. The word yoga is derived from the Sanskrit root yug, meaning to unite, to join, or to concentrate one's attention. Focusing our attention, joining the mind, the body, and the breath, stops us from spinning in the outside world and brings us into balance within ourselves. A quiet mind allows us to see life more evenly and with greater possibilities. With continued practice, you may find that you respond to life's challenges more calmly and effectively. At the very least, your reward will be feeling more alive and well in a more toned and happy body. This video is designed to teach you that simple movements and breath can enhance the quality of your life. I won't be asking you to twist into pretzel shapes or to stand on your head. It takes years of practice to achieve stability and ease in advanced yoga postures. The good news is that the benefits can be gained almost immediately in the simple postures and breath. Foundation is essential. This series, Level 1, will help you build a strong, safe foundation. Simple variations are given in some of the warm-up and classic yoga poses. Use them to help you learn alignment and how to lengthen and strengthen muscle evenly. As you progress with Series 1, try the more advanced variations. This should allow almost everyone a beginning and room for growth. Throughout the series, I'll continue to remind you of your breath. If you find yourself holding your breath or breathing shallow, just bring your awareness back to your breathing. The breath should be in through the nose and out through the nose. Generally speaking, move into a pose with an exhalation and out of the pose with an inhalation. Match the length of the inhalation to the length of the exhalation. Both elements of the breath are important. Among many other things, the inhalation is invigorating and contains chemical nutrients that help the body convert food to energy. The exhalation is relaxing and helps remove toxins from the body. Also, the breath is a direct link to the nervous system. Balancing the inhalation to the exhalation helps bring equanimity to the body and mind. 
Like most things in life, it's not the goal that matters. It's the intelligence and the integrity we put into the journey that's important. Never force a muscle or a joint. A healthy muscle is strong and flexible. A healthy joint is stable, yet moves easily in the direction for which it was designed. When overworked or overstretched, a muscle will respond by contracting, causing soreness, cramping, spasm, and possible tearing. Forcing a joint can cause permanent damage to ligaments and tendons, which can lead to instability and chronic pain. Treat your body with respect, and it will reward you by escorting you through life more gracefully. This series includes a warm-up to lengthen muscle and encourage mobility in joints, and prepare you for the rest of the series. Standing poses are included for balance, strength, and flexibility. Simple back bends to improve posture by creating strength and flexibility in the spine, and simple twists to help release neck, shoulder, and back tension. We will end with deep relaxation pose. This will give us time to notice the nourishing and invigorating effects of our practice. It's great to practice every day, but if time is a problem, three times per week is a good place to start. On the off days, try doing the warm-up series and deep relaxation pose. It's also good to choose some of the poses from the warm-up series to do in the middle of the day as a timeout to release tension or in the transition from work to responsibilities at home. These are just suggestions. Schedule a time that works for you. Bend your knees and turn onto your right side. Take a couple of breaths while you're there. Use your hands to help you come up to a sitting position. In my experience, it's impossible to practice yoga and not feel better in my body, my state of mind, and my life. I trust this will be your experience as well. Our best wishes. Namaste.